Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking cat animation effect using Adobe After Effects and Duick Angela. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to download our asset. Now I've just downloaded this from Freepik, so I've opened it up in Illustrator. And what we need to do is we need to come and find the layers menu over here. Now everything you want to animate, you will have to put onto a new layer. So I want to animate the heart, the tail and the eyes. So what I have to do is I'm just going to put down a few layers. All I have to do is find where that asset is and just drag it to that new layer. Sometimes, you know, for example, the eyes have three um, things in them. So what you have to do is you will have to highlight all of them and then drag it and then you can do the same for the rest and then you can find where the tail is as well. So you can go through and turn the eye off and on to find where the tail is and then once you're happy with it, just drag it to a new layer. Once you're happy with that, save it and then we'll take it to After Effects. So now we're in After Effects and the first thing that we need to do is we need to make a new composition. 1920 by 1080 pixels will be fine, 30 FPS at a duration of about 10 to 15 seconds. So press OK. Once we've got that, then what we need to do is we need to import our cat. So I'm just going to go import file. And what we want to do is we want to import it as a composition. And so now once we've done that, now you can see all the cat layers here and I can just drag it to my main comp. Now obviously it's way too big for this um, composition. So what we need to do is I'm just going to come over here, create a new null object, highlight all the layers and then make sure that you link them to the null press S for scale and then bring it down to however big you want. Now we don't need the null anymore so we can actually delete it but what we do need to do is we need to rename all of these layers just so it's easier for us later on. So the first one is going to be body. All right, cool. So now I've just put the tail underneath the body and now we're actually ready to animate. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we're off the layers and we're going to click a new shape layer. So if you don't see this uh, icon over here, it's underneath and we're just going to grab the ellipse tool and I'm just going to draw a circle that roughly covers that eye. So I'm going to do something like that. And then what I'm going to do is, so I'm just going to put that underneath the left eye. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate that and put it underneath the right eye. So now once we have that, I'm just going to move that uh, second uh, eye layer to the other side and we'll just have something like that and now what we need to do is go back to the left eye and then go to the track mat and then just put it to that first shape layer and so now if you've done that correctly now I can move that eye around inside that track mat and I'm going to do the same for the second uh, eye I'm just going to come down change it to shape layer 2 and now if I try to move that eye it sits in there so that's pretty cool now we need to animate it so i'm going to come down to these shape layers the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to hit the pan behind tool move that anchor point to the middle of that eye and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to press s for scale and i'm going to unlink them that so that constrained properties i'm going to hit the stopwatch for scale and i'm going to zoom in so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add another keyframe and then I'm going to move forward to 10 frames, add another keyframe, come back to that one in the middle, make sure you select it and then just change that to about 5%. And so now if you've done that correctly, now you have that eye blinking movement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all the keyframes, go to animation, uh, keyframe assistant, easy ease and now that will make it look a lot smoother. So we're going to repeat the process for the next eye. So step one. One, we're going to get that pan behind uh, anchor point tool, move it to the middle. Uh, but this time what we're going to do is we're just going to copy the keyframes that we have. So I'm just going to press S for scale, start at the beginning and then paste them in. And so now if you've done that correctly, now you'll have that cool, nice eye animation and that's looking pretty good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to connect this up to Juic Angela. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to open up Juic Angela. So I've already installed it. I hope you can install it. The instructions will be in the link below. And once we're in here, what we need to do is we need to come down to this one here. All right, so links and constraints. 
and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on this options uh, icon and then I'm gonna click the slider so the first thing I'm gonna do on this slider is I'm just gonna scale it up just so that we can see it and I'm also going to add a fill effect just so I can see it on this uh, background over here and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the slider all the way to one side and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight all of those keyframes and then I'm gonna go back into my Juic Angela and then make sure I hit properties. And so if you've done this correctly, now what will happen is now you will have a slider that controls the animation for the eye blinking. So now we're up to animating. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit P on my keyboard for position. I'm gonna hit the stopwatch for position over there. I'm gonna move forward to 10 keyframes uh, over here. I'm just gonna hit that keyframe um, button again and then I'm gonna move uh, to 20 keyframes and hit that button again. I'm gonna come to that one in the middle and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move that slider all the way to the other side. And so now you can see we have a nice double eye blink movement and that's looking pretty good. So the only other thing I'll do to this is I'll go and easy ease these so I can or you can press F9. And then I'm just going to duplicate that probably every second. So that's at two seconds. Uh, maybe we will do it at four seconds, maybe at six seconds. And there we have a nice, you know, eye blinking animation that kind of uh, goes for a few keyframes. And to make that loop forever, what we can do is we can hold option, hit that stopwatch and just write uh, loop out. And if we've done that correctly, now you will see that it will get to the end over here and it will keep on going. Cool. So now once you're happy with that, the next thing that we need to do is the heart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the heart and I'm just going to press P for position. I'm going to hit um, option and click that stopwatch. I'm going to write another expression, wiggle one comma let's say 30 and so now you can see we've got the heart wiggling over there and that's looking pretty cool and then we can move on to the final thing which is to get the tail to move so to do that what we need to do is i'm just going to come down to the tail section over here i'm just going to rotate it slightly so it kind of looks maybe something like that and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go and click on the puppet uh, pin icon over here and then I'm just going to put some puppet pins all along the tail so the more you do the more um, places that you have for it to animate but you don't want to go too crazy so now once you have all your puppet pins in there you can highlight them more by holding shift and clicking on them and then what you need to do is you'll need to go back to Juic Angela and what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go and click on. So going back to Juic Angela, I just pressed back and then I went back into my connectors. I need to come down here to add pins with all of these uh, connected. If I click add pins, just go ignore. Now it will create all of these pins for me. And so what I need to do is I just need to start at the top. So that's my last pin. Go to the bottom, highlight them all. And then if I go to kinematics and if I go to forward kinematics and just press um, on that, now it will create another controller for me. So if I press R for rotation, now you can see I can make the tail wag as well. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna kind of do the same kind of thing. I'm gonna hit the stopwatch. I'm gonna move forward in time to let's say one second and I'll put it to maybe 30% and then I'll go to two seconds and then I'll bring it back down to zero and I'll highlight all of them and I'll go to keyframe assistant easy ease and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make that loop out. So I'm gonna hold option, click on that stopwatch and I'll go loop out and this time it's going to be ping pong and if you've done that correctly now you will see that the tail is wagging so i just want to move that tail just you know um, inside the body so what i have to do is i just have to find that first um, puppet pin 
and once I've done that now I can move it and drag it around and you want to drag that anchor point with it as well so once you've done that the final thing that we can do here is we can just add a background so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go and right click and uh, go new solid call it bg and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to make sure that i drag it all the way at the bottom and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to search for an effect called gradient ramp and I'm just going to change the colors in here. So I'm just going to go with a kind of uh, pinkish, um, you know, color over there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab that same color, but I'm going to get maybe something a little bit darker, just like that. And I'm going to change it to a radial ramp. And then I'm just going to move that color just so it's uh, maybe something like that. And then the final thing to just tie it all up is to create a new adjustment layer. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna make sure that that adjustment layer is all the way at the top. And I'm gonna search for an effect called noise. And I'm gonna put probably about 8% noise on that. And so now if you've done that correctly, now you would have used Juic Angela to create a nice animated scene um, pretty easily and you have the options for that slider control. So anyways guys, thanks for watching your short tutorial on how to use Juic Angela. Hope you learned something and I'll see you guys in the next video.